everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Mayo and I teach creative people how to sell their art online. And today I have a design with me tutorial that I know that a lot of you have been waiting for for a long time because a lot of you have been constantly asking for it in the comments, in the live chats, and in private DMs. And that topic is, well, you can actually see it in the name of the video, how to use public domain art in your print in the end. Or printables. Now, public domain art, or basically everything that is public domain, is graphics, photos, everything you can use for commercial purposes most of the time without giving any attribution to the person creating this art. That means that this type of art, this type of file, has basically no copyrights. And a lot of people might be surprised to hear that a lot of very famous paintings don't have copyrights. For example, I got my notebook. I don't know if you guys not recognize it, but it's from my previous videos, my earliest videos. This was my journal book for 2021, and it's Starry Night by Van Gogh, and there is no copyright infringement with this design because artwork over 100 years old by someone who died has no copyrights. Well, mostly has no copyrights, and there is an excellent website that can actually show you high quality, high resolution photos of famous art pieces without copyright. There are obviously a lot more websites for this, but that website specifically, the one I'm using, is called Raw Pixel. Now, Raw Pixel actually has public domain category with a lot of public domain photos by famous artists. And you can see if they have the commercial use approved license, the CCO, which means no attribution needed, you can fully use it for anything you want. And yes, what I'm doing with this tutorial might be designing these things, but you can just flat out put them on products. I personally prefer not to just put them on products. You guys ask me, you know, to make a video how to incorporate these public domain arts or public domain pieces into print and demand items. And that took me to a deep journey to Canva, to Clip Studio Paint, using these two tools and actually designing something for Redbubble, designing something for TeePublic, and designing something for Zazzle. And you know, I just wanna take you with me on this journey. So let's just make myself smaller. So I can start sharing something that I did this morning, starting with June, a painting by Julie de Grog that was painted in 1918. So yeah, no copyrights. And what I did with this painting, I actually really liked it. So I took it to Canva after downloading it. And that's the part where I do have to tell you, downloading it takes forever. Downloading these items take forever. They're extremely high resolution and even like, I don't know, like 3000 pixels took forever. This specific artwork was 2110 by 1784 pixels, a very small file for most print and demand. And what I did is I created on Canva a 2000 by 1600 pixel design to basically stretch in this art piece and remove the back spaces of it. Cause it had the white spacing ahead of it. It had the frame with the signature and I just wanted the flower itself. Yes, I was stretching it really, really big, but the original DPI of the photo was 300, which is extreme high resolution. So there was no problems with that. Once I did that, I basically duplicated the file and used my color mix option in Canva to basically change the colors of this flower, creating myself not just the pink flower, but also something that is a bit more purple, something a bit more green, and even playing with the saturation to create a full on black and white flower. Once I was done, I downloaded all of these files and opened a file in Canva that is basically doubling up the sizes of this, basically making the size type four, which is 4,000 by 3,200. And then what I did is actually pretty simple. All I did was go to elements, find my grids, find a two by two, four picture grid, work on my spacing a little bit, and then just place the individual flower photos within my design. And of course, I could have placed all of them, I could have placed different ones, I could have repeated like the black and the pink or the black and the blue all over again. I also gave this a black background so that the spacing was sort of create a frame to each and every one of the design and made sure that the spacing in the middle is larger or actually more accurate double than the spacing in the corners because that's what I need to create basically this seamless aspect. Then I went to Redbubble. I mean, this is a bit of a small design for Redbubble for most of their products, but they have the repeat button, which would honestly 
make this like a big floral pattern. And so I uploaded it onto Redbubble. I deactivated some products like the t-shirts or the big print item t-shirts or the caps because they don't have the repeat option and I really wanna work with that option unless it's for wall art. So I deactivated those, but as you can see with things like the chiffon top, the graphic t-shirt, just by choosing either the regular grid or the offset grid, you can create really amazing instant patterns. And because this artwork has no copyright, there is no problem actually using the name of the artist. Now, with that being said, I'm gonna take a little small disclaimer saying that some platforms might not be acceptable to you using famous art. So you can get suspended or flagged by different platforms if it doesn't fit their rules. But if you're selling this on your own Shopify store using print and demand suppliers like Printful or Printify, this is completely legal. After uploading it to all of Redbubble products using the regular or the offset grid, I found myself looking at what came out of it. And of course, not all products were activated. You might see that a lot of products are missing, like the baby clothes and all the t-shirts, but a lot of the products are here. And obviously you could have played around with the sizes a bit, make it a bit bigger or smaller. I do like the A-line dress a lot. And also the laptop sleeve, I found it to be adorable. The iPhone cases are cute. The canvas mounted print I really like, as well as the tapestry. And a lot of the big items actually look really good with this type of pattern, like the throw blanket, even like the duffel bag, which I'm kind of thinking if I want to order for myself to test it out, because I have the duffel bag from Printful. In any case, I went back to Julie de Grog and she has some amazing stuff. And I thought, you know, you could pretty much do the same with like the cats here, like the blue cat and the orange cat and you can also do the same with like Van Gogh paintings like Van Gogh world and I was looking into other artists like Paul Klee and I was trying to see because he has a lot of interesting patterns I really like his works but I think that for the sake of this tutorial I really didn't find myself in Paul Klee like I didn't find the inspiration I wanted so I went back to just public domain and you know I just searched for Van Gogh because I knew that I was going to do a Van Gogh and I just went in. Again, you can just download seven or eight of these photos and create a collage and multiply it and do like World of Van Gogh famous paintings. You can create like a blanket with like a bunch of famous paintings on it from different artists. And I was looking into Starry Night, even though it's a bit of a cliche, so no. And at the end of my search, I chose the sunflowers. Uh, I am passionate about the sunflowers painting and the size that I got to download it was 3224 pixels by 4211 pixels. And as you can see, you can use it for commercial purposes with no attribution required under the CCO license. And downloading it again takes forever, which is why in the process of downloading it, I went to different artists, for example, Ohara Koson with these amazing fish. Amazing fish. I love these fish. Common and golden carp. I really like them and I also like the tiger. There is like the roaring tiger at the crescent moon that I really liked. And I was thinking, what if I can make a pattern from these fish by removing the background or have the lion roar on something else other than the moon? So I downloaded them as well. And again, waited forever. In the meantime, I thought to myself that you can also do a lot of things with silhouettes, for example, by using masking on the silhouette to create shapes of cats that are actually patterns uh, the hair of a woman that is actually a pattern and for that my favorite artist that makes the most amazing patterns is William Morris and of course William Morris is right here on raw pixels he has such amazing patterns I mean some of his pattern work is flat out inspiring that person should have been the person inventing print on demand pillows seriously he has such amazing patterns and one of my favorite patterns even though he has a lot of like nature ones, um, a lot of like decorative patterns that kind of resemble what you would see on old tiles, on old cloth maps. But I do love one of his works that's called the Strawberry Thieves Pattern, featuring two cute birds and a strawberry field, which I thought would be really nice to put like a bird pattern on a cat or something like that. Mind you, again, this is the first initial process. You need to think about things Maybe after you thought about an idea and you downloaded the file, you see that that idea doesn't work with that file, that this file is better for other projects, or that for that idea, you're going to need a different pattern or a different painting. 
but just start by downloading, assembling your own sort of folder of the things that you can access and do because there is a lot to be done here. So once I downloaded it, obviously the rest of the files were already downloaded as well. I upload them onto Canva. We have the Sandflower by Van Gogh and we have the Fish and the Roaring Tiger by O'Hara Cosson, a couple of my favorite paintings. And what I did was basically let Canva's AI do the work by just selecting my fish and clicking on background remover. And the minute you clear the background, I don't know if you can see, but it doesn't really take the other fish away. Like I chose the big fish and then removing the background was supposed to delete also the other fishes, but it didn't because it removes the background of the entire photo, not just the selected. So I just went to erase and manually erase the two other fish from the painting because I want to have a file of just the big fish. By the way, I did the exact same thing with just the two small fish. Even though I didn't use the big fish at the end, I'm still, I still might think I'm gonna use it because you can still use that fish, that very famous fish for, I don't know, some fishing t-shirts. After doing the same with the two small fish and saving my progress so I have that file, while well, still the pattern <laughs> from William Morris was still being downloaded, I took the tiger painting of Ohala Kusson and again moved the background. I was um, kind of worried about that one because the background colors are really similar to what the lion is doing in his mouth. The whole part like here of the lion is really similar in the colors to the background. But Canva's AI did a really, really good job by removing the background, which led me to a totally different design made on 5,000 by 5,000 pixel, which is my favorite size on Canva. It's also the largest size that you can create if it's just square art. And for this one, I just did something, uh, I don't want to say stupid, but mind you, again, I am making these designs very, very early in the morning. What I basically did was put the tiger in one corner, sort of floating in the air, and then just surrounded myself with the fish, with the small fish. And using the color mix, I changed the colors a bit. Um, I didn't really like all of them. I, I felt like they don't really match the colors of the fish, like these effects are not really good, but the marmalade effect actually created really nice fish. And then sort of like flipping some of the fish around to the other side, like horizontally, vertically, tilting them to the other side, making them bigger and making them smaller. Some of them are with a marmalade effect, some of them without. I created sort of this area of the fish. And then I was thinking to myself, okay, I'm missing something. I'm missing a lot. And I searched on Elements Watercolor Mountain to put sort of behind the tiger as if the tiger is standing on a mountain and he's roaring at huge fish. I don't know what was up with me this morning. Um, I don't know. Do you guys think that it's a good idea? I mean, am I crazy or what? And it took me a while, you know, to try to adjust the mountain to be behind the tiger as if he's actually standing on it, sort of working on perspective and if it looks like native to me in a way. And then what I did was also type in watercolor water in the elements. And I wanted to create maybe a river under it. I was also thinking at some point, you know what, I'm just gonna take these elements and drop them to my Procreate and manually draw on them. But then I thought I wanna make it just with Canva. So I deleted that water initial thing and found this like square shapes of stuff and just made nine different of them, like copy paste, copy paste to make nine different squares of that watercolor water illustration. And then all I did was hit on the shift key while selecting all of them one by one, grouping them and sending them to the background. So the mountain comes out of the water and then you have the fish. And I didn't really know if this feels right or not, but I downloaded it anyway because it looked kind of cute. And then I was trying to take the William Morris design up to Canva, which it didn't allow me because it was too heavy. It was 31 megabyte. Ugh, that's insane. And I knew that I'm gonna have to do something else with it, maybe with Clip Studio Paint, but first I needed to work on something because we're talking about masking effects. I don't mind that I cannot use it at all in Canva because I need it for Clip Studio Paint anyway. And I just started searching for uh, sort of silhouette items. Uh, I was searching for a cat and I really wanted to find like a nice silhouette shape of a cat that I thought would work. 
And I also wanted to find a nice silhouette of a woman to basically make her hair with this pattern of William Morris. So I just searched for elements called woman hair and I'm searching for static elements to not see all the gifts or things moving around. And there's a lot of hair here. By the way, I, I'm pretty sure you can make like a full face from Canva. There are a lot of facial aspects or like elements here. And I found this little woman here that looked kind of adorable that I really do like. But then I thought to myself, there are some designs that I made for Tee Public that I really like that sort of have this cat overlooking sort of a window. And I thought I can create it here as well. So what I did was wrote cat black instead of cat silhouette, by the way, you can just write down cat silhouette. And then I went back to all of the elements and went down into frames because I thought about maybe creating, you know, a frame of a window uh, to put the photo in it. And then I just said, hey, maybe they just have window frames, you know? And they do. <laughs> so there's an actual window with like a ledge and everything. So I was thinking, what if the cat would sit on the window and the window would basically feature one of these art pieces? And that's when I encountered the problem of the color of the window is <laughs> very similar to the color of the Van Gogh. So I colored my window in black, the same as the cat. And I was playing around with this concept several times, whether, you know, using the Van Gogh, using the tiger image, making the tiger image a bit bigger to fit my design, or using different types of windows with different types of colors. Also, at that point, you can also choose a totally different pattern, a totally different design by a, fam by a different famous artist. I just went with what I had here and I thought it was rather adorable. Another thing that I did was just take the Van Gogh as is because Canva has some interesting mosaic effects under paint effects. If you can't see paint effects where I see them, that's fine, it's just because I'm using them. Go down below, there are a lot more effects that you can basically download into your Canva to be used later. And within paint effects, I'm using the mosaic, which takes forever to upload because I had really, really bad internet this morning. And as you can see, it turned it into that this glass art you can work on the intensity of the effect, also the frequency, low, medium, or high. And it ended up being a really nice photo of the sunflowers of Van Gogh that I really, really did like. And now I thought to myself, some of these elements I would want to use as is, some of them I still need to work on. I do have the cat and the woman that I wanted to make something with a pattern. So let's just download all of them to go to Clip Studio Paint. Now, the first thing I did was to take the pattern photo of William Morris and open it on Clip Studio Paint, while also taking my cat silhouette and the woman to Clip Studio Paint, because I want to use these photos as reference for masking for my pattern. And the way to do it is just simply like Control A or Command A, depends what you're using, to select my entire photo, and then Control C, Control V to copy it into the new workspace putting it behind my cat, and then basically coloring my cat with blank. Now all I have to do is, you know, move it around a bit, see if I like how it goes. And I really like the bird to be inside the cat, but there is a blank space at the bottom. The thing is, it's a pattern. <laughs> it's a seamless pattern. So all I did was duplicate this again to continue the pattern in the tail. And once you have the background fully formed, you just merge all visible layers and then delete the background. Now, I do know that in some of my videos, you might have seen that I've been talking about creating a design and then it sort of doesn't look good on a lot of different colors because it needs sort of a, a background or sort of like a line around it. So what I do is create another layer just so I can see what I'm doing while clicking on the border effect with Clip Studio Paint on the design of the cat. By the way, it also created this border around it that I think was not properly deleted, that I'm not sure where it came from, maybe from the alignment of the two items, but it's not a problem for me at all. All I have to do is just deactivate my background, save this as PNG, and then later on in my computer, I just cropped the actual photo. It was relatively pretty simple. Now, the other thing that I did is, again, copy paste the pattern to the design of the woman, placing it behind the woman, and then coloring her hair with blank. And I also, I thought to myself maybe to color like the ascending lines or like the 
uh, bordering line, but then I just colored them in black instead of transparent and also colored her nose in black for, you know, better composition. And then again, merging those two layers together so I can delete the entire background of everything, give myself the thickness of edges this time in the color black and work on making them a little bit thicker and saving this design which is, by the way, what I uploaded onto our Facebook group as well as to the channel community tab. That was what's on the hoodie. And it's a beautiful silhouette of a woman. You know, you have her face a little bit. It's a beautiful illustration with the background basically being William Morris. And then I noticed something really um, stupid <laughs> that I did because when I was working on Canva and downloading these two cats, the cat next to the window with a tiger and with a Van Gogh, I forgot to delete the background. Now. I can just delete the background myself with Clip Studio Paint or just re-download it with a transparent background, which is what I did. Which leads me with all of these designs to another platform. So we visited Redbubble today. How about visiting Zazzle? Okay, so I've been working on my Mystic Saw um, sort of puzzle store. There have been a lot of different updates. I've been working on different collections. I actually started creating more cartoon art myself, as you can see here with the snail on lettuce jigsaw puzzle. I've made them with Procreate, um, sort of like drafting over something else and sort of finding different styles that I want to do. And I was thinking that a really nice idea for basically my Zazzle puzzles would be either that tiger effect or the mosaic that I did for Van Gogh's sunflowers. And so I decided to upload my little tiger roaring on fish and just went into sell on Zazzle to see all products and typed in puzzle because, well, it's a puzzle. And I went straight for the 20 inch by 20 inch puzzle. I don't think that I'll make this design available on any of the other sizes. There was a full tutorial, by the way, about Zazzle, the quality of their puzzles, how to upload a puzzle. This is not that kind of tutorial. So if you are really interested in specifically the puzzles, you can go ahead and check it out. I will leave a link to that tutorial down below. But for now, what I did is uploading the Roaring Tiger onto this Zazzle puzzle. And it does look rather adorable. I kind of like how it looks. And then you just click on sell it. And in the title, check out your marketplace department, which is only one for Jigsaw Puzzle. It's just the sport, toys and games. And writing a description. Using the artworks of O'Hara Coslin, I created a jigsaw puzzle combining her two paintings, Common and Golden Carp and Roaring Tiger, to this weird abstract puzzle of a tiger roaring at fish. It, it really does look dumb. It really doesn't does look dumb. And I only chose to display this on square only, not on the rectangle sizes, because I didn't think it would look so good. And then just putting in the tags, including the actual name of the artist and the main elements here, choosing your commission, having the rights to show this work and posting it into Zazzle, which is quite adorable. I do have to say it looks really, really good. It actually looks like a puzzle I'll be interested in doing because it has some elements of it that are very distinguished, like the tiger and the mountain, which will be on one side. And then you have the whole overall light blue effect, which is kind of cool. And then I went to Tea Public. Because uh, I really like uploading stuff to Public these days. I don't know why. Uh, maybe because I'm selling there. Who knows? In any case, I went into Public, and you can see here some of the stuff that I've been doing throughout the weekend. Also, like these cats. And this was actually made totally using Canva. If you want me to make a tutorial about those, please let me know in the comment section down below. Because it was really fun using like a cat that is looking at something. And it was really easy to make. Maybe I'll just make it with a masking video that I really need to do. In any case, I moved into upload new work and decided to upload the cat in the window, basically looking at the painting of the Roaring Tiger. And you know, cat looking at Roaring Tiger was a, a really uh, easy name to come up with. And the main tag was just cat lovers or cat lover gifts. And again, I was not even hiding the fact that this is famous artwork. Cat looking at famous Roaring Tiger painting of O'Hara Kosson outside the window. And then writing tags like cat or tiger or O'Hara Koson, her name itself, window, cat at the window, looking at stuff. In any case, I moved in here and what I saw was the fact that it would pretty much only look good on white t-shirts. Because the design is really black, I felt like there was something missing with the colors. I do need a background for it. And that is when I'm telling you guys, seriously, if you upload something and it's not perfect, 
take one or two more minutes to change it. So I just opened it in Flip Studio Paint and just added the edges again. So the easiest way for me to do it is by adding a different layer, putting it behind it so I'll have another layer for comparison, going to my layer, choosing the border effects and thickening up the edges. You can also do it with Canva. Actually, up, re-upload this photo onto Canva and with photo effects, choose sort of like the glow, drop, shadow, whatever, and do it there. There was a full tutorial on Canva photo effects. You can go ahead and check it out. It was pretty good. They have amazing photo effects. But it was easier for me to just do it with Clip Studio Paint because it was open at the time and it, it's, it's faster for me, I guess. And then I switch my artwork, which by the way, doesn't delete everything I already wrote. So it's not like I had to do the tags and the name and the description all over again, just to upload a new piece of work and then scroll down and decide on the colors that I want this activated. In this case, it was all of them. How do you want it to align it? And what would be the front images of each and every one? And yes, I activate this one on all colors because even though I think some colors are awful with this, my design of uh, the jigsaw puzzles, I'd rather be puzzling sold on a red color that I didn't even want to activate because I thought it looked disgusting, but activated it on purpose and it sold. So I'm just activating on everything that doesn't clash with the design. And, you know, even the baby onesies, even though, you know, what if, who would want a baby onesie with a tiger, with a cat roaring and a tiger looking at a tiger that is roaring? But, we're not here to think for other people. If As long as it's designed well, don't think who might like it. You know, just put it on everything that is available and looking good on. I played around with a bit of the colors, sort of like dark pastels for the majority of the part on different items. And for the mugs, I just gave it a white background, just a simple white background. For the wall art, I was playing around with it quite a bit, especially trying to change the aspect ratios, maybe even to go with a one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, eventually, I think I went with a five by six or the four by five, no, the five by six. It looked really good. I kept on making it bigger and smaller and bigger and smaller, trying to think how it looks. It's fast if I want it with a white background, if I want it with a different background. Sometimes I really work a lot about these things and eventually I chose like dark olive. I don't know where that came from. And then with the journals and notebooks, I just chose the initial, you know, burgundy sort of wine that came from the actual official t-shirt color that I chose. And then we had the pillows and the tote bags. I was trying to choose more bright and playful colors for those. Choosing the portrait aspect for my wall art tapestry, aligning them a little bit. And sometimes with the tapestries, I like to choose two different colors, one for the medium and large and one for the small. I don't know, just more options. And I don't know why I keep on deactivating pins. Magnets as well as the stickers were that I cut only and the masks I thought didn't really look good, and I published this work. I have a full category for cat lovers, so it doesn't really clash with what I'm doing. Next up, I decided to use my Van Gogh, the mosaic, and I just cropped it because it had this like white background, and I just cropped it using the Mac. You can also do it with Canva or with different other tools, with Photoshop, with whatever you're using. And I went back into Zazzle because there has been a puzzle that I've been curious about. It's the acrylic puzzle, and I've never used it before. And I thought that if ever was a nice product to be on like acrylic because they're water resistant and like super cool and shiny or something, I thought that this sort of mosaic pattern would be brilliant for the acrylic puzzle. So I went in, I chose the acrylic puzzle, which by the way is annoying because you cannot flip it. Like the initial one is horizontal and you cannot make the initial photo vertical, which is kind of annoying because that photo is vertical. But I uploaded my Van Gogh onto it and just rotated it there is an option to rotate it and you can click on the preview because within the preview they show you a horizontal and a vertically aligned puzzle. Just make sure that the vertically aligned is not, you know, upside down. Because if you do find out that it's upside down, all you have to do is rotate it four times again and again and again and again to the other side. And in that case, it looked good. I tried giving it some background colors. At first I thought it might be nice, but then I just decided that I just want to stretch it all over the place. So I just clicked on it and clicked on fill. I was kind of happy with it. I'm also pretty excited maybe to order from them, even though it's a big hassle ordering from the States to Bulgaria at the moment, but it was a really nice puzzle. And again, the whole process of selling it by making the title, making the description and so on and so on. Eventually I ended up with this puzzle again in my shop. And I do think maybe I'll just have a full category of uh, mosaic effects on famous paintings. 
or mosaic on pretty much any kind of photo. I do think that it will make for like a nice, um, I don't know, a nice collection of puzzles. I do think it's a, it's a pretty interesting puzzle to make. But let's just make myself bigger again. Because we have been talking a lot. Well, I have been talking a lot. And if you follow my community tab, you know that I've had a few rough days. Um, I, I do not believe it's COVID. I went up the mountain uh, to take amazing photos and I didn't take gloves and it was like minus 16. <laughs> so I came back with like my left tonsil killing me and I'm way better now, even though it's really hard to talk. Uh, so um, at this point, I will remember to tell you that if you like this video or found this content useful, feel free to hit that like button down below because every time you do, it really does help my channel and really does make me feel better about filming when I feel so bad. And subscribe to my channel if you are not yet subscribed. But seriously, you can do so many things with public domain art. You can combine them in a lot of the things that you do, whether you're stating out that you're using this public domain art, whether you're making a full blanket that is a collage of Van Gogh paintings, or you're making wall art compiled from famous flowers, or just the Roaring Tiger, which by the way got me thinking, we are in the year of the tiger and there was a year of the tiger tutorial, like the Chinese new year. And I will leave a link to that down below. Don't worry. But I was thinking that maybe I'll combine uh, a little bit during the, the next few hours. Maybe I'll take some of these famous tigers and make myself more year of the tigers designs to tea public. I have been uploading a lot more designs on Tezeazol to my different types of puzzle collections and really, really improving on the setup of a Zazzle store, how to make your collections appear. And there will be a full tutorial on making a store on Zazzle later on, probably in February. For those of you who are in our group or following this channel's community tab, you also know that I was looking into Udemy to take some courses on Procreate. And of course, every course that I take, I will let you know how it went, whether it's with a full video or with just a comment in the community tab and in our group because I do believe that no matter who you are and what you do, learning a new thing is always fun. The thing is, I was looking at so many Udemy courses and I really didn't know what to take. I'm very selective at how I like my teachings. There are so many things that I really want the teacher to say what they're doing so I can do the same. And there are a lot of things that I hate that the teacher constantly says because I already know. So it's really hard for me to pretty much learn anything from videos. I usually learn from either like full-on tutorials, but when I'm talking tutorials, like WordPress tutorials, so it's, you know, all the little details and the step-by-step, -step, or I'm learning from reading. So I was really afraid to get a course and get disappointed, and then I started looking at Domestica. They also have courses, and 21 Draw that also have courses. And then Mirna, I think I'm saying your name right, Mirna Gomez commented to try Skillshare. Uh, so I did, and I applied to Skillshare today. I'm going to let you know how it goes. I got the seven days free trial as I was about to apply, and then actually got a better trial offer because I didn't apply. And basically uh, did one tutorial and created this from this reference photo. Well, you know, it's kind of weird showing it to you on the iPad. I'm just going to show it to you on the screen. And it was a really nice process of doing, even though after I did it, I realized I forgot the eye. I was listening to half the tutorial. Half the time the tutorial was on mute while I was doing something else in the background, like listening to other music. But it really was a nice thing to do. And it wasn't so difficult. This was my first time trying to draw these like light and darkness stuff. I'm not saying it's perfect, but if I can do it, a lot of people can. And I'm really looking into some of these courses and I'm thinking about trying out a lot of these courses so that I'll be able to sort of group them together for a topic. So for example, how to make custom print on demand or digital download posters, how to sell them on Etsy, and then just offering you guys courses that I've checked that are really good for creating portraits. Even if you're a beginner with Procreate, please let me know if that is something that is interesting to you. I am with a Skillshare membership, so I can test out as many courses as I want. So feel free. If you have a course that you guys want me to test out, please let me know. There are also a bunch of courses on Print in the end. So I am planning to learn a lot in the next few days, sort of replacing my morning music routine with just courses running in the background. And I'm really looking forward to it. I'm also looking forward to the next few days with more videos in this channel, reviewing different products that I got from Print in the Man suppliers, as well as 
I think would be the marketing tutorial for print on demand this month. I plan on doing like all the ways to market your print on demand and all the ways to market your printables business. And there are a lot more videos coming up, but I'm moving apartments this weekend. So it might be pushed to February. But one thing that will definitely be in February is the 1st of February with the goals videos because my monthly goals are coming back. I got... I think it was like 17 DMs after one of my videos asking if you guys want them back. So yes, they're going to come back and a lot more videos following that. Well, this was a long video. And now I'm going to go rest my voice a little bit because I kind of feel like I'm dying. But I hope that you guys enjoyed this tutorial of how to take public domain art and combine it with different designs for your own print on demand. And uh, that being said, <laughs> that was it from me for today. Thank you so much for watching and as usual, I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye!